So, I was recording. I was having a lot of fun explaining everything that I'm about to teach you. And then when I looked at the recorder, uh, 12 minutes had passed and my microphone was muted. Anyway, my name is Abraham and today we're going to be taking a look at proportions, my friends. We're going to be taking a look at these characters right here, which by the way are characters that we've done in our courses. And I'm going to be explaining all of the important things that you need to know about why proportions are important and why we use them when creating characters. So what is a proportion? A proportion is a relationship between one object and another one. To give you the best or easiest example, I have this bottle of Coke that I just finished and I have this cup right here. So if we compare the two, you can say that the proportion from this bottle to this uh, cup is of uh, two cups for one bottle, right? So if we if we had two cups, we would get the exact same height or very close to the bottle. So that's a proportion. There's a relationship between those two objects. And it happens the same way here on our characters. Now, for a lot of uh, long time, all of my drawings now gone, <laughs> for a long time, we've been using this proportion charts right here to create our characters. If you've ever done any drawing classes, if you've ever done any sculpting classes, you've probably used any of this too for female and for male characters. I do want to make a very important distinction right here, and that's the fact that we as uh, society, as the world, we're realizing that there's so much potential in exploring other types of characters. And I have this picture right here, which is to me just an amazing picture. I actually have this on one of my main like reference folders, which is a series that they did a couple of years ago when, in one of the Olympics, where they pictured the top competing athletes, both female and males, in all of the different categories. And they showcase the different types of bodies that you can find along all of the different disciplines. Why? Because it's important for us to realize that depending on the type of sport that you're doing, your body is going to develop in a slightly different way, or not slightly, sometimes even very drastically. You have really tall bodies, really short bodies, really long bodies, really heavy bodies. Like there's so many different variations along the line. And each one of these athletes that you're seeing right here were one of the top contenders, like one of the top humans in the whole world. So to me, it's really impressive to see all of the difference that we can find in the human characters. I was mentioning on the last video that unfortunately I had, I'm had i having to re-record <laughs> that one of my favorite games is Borderlands 2. And one of the things that I love about Borderlands 2 was that the cast of characters, both the main playable characters and the supporting cast were very, like they, they had a lot of variation. There's like a tiny Tina, which is like a, like a girl. And then you had like a, this like traditional like European guys, this guy that was really short. Um, there was so, so many different guys. There was a, a mechanic girl that was uh, a lot bigger, but she was really cool. So there's so, so, so many different characters like this thing right here. Like this series has always had a lot of variation in their character, like concepting and creation. And I really admire that. Another example that I think did a good job. I know there's been critiques in the in the past couple of years, but I personally think that they did a, a or they 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 yeah they did a good step forward. Was Overwatch right? Like the variation in characters that we have in Overwatch is really really cool as well. The representation that we have is really cool as well. So that's the kind of stuff that I would invite you guys to do. Whenever you're designing a new game, whenever you're thinking about a new like story or whatever, make sure to think about all of the different body types that you can use to create a really compelling and interesting characters. Now. Going back to this ones right here, these are like the traditional bodies. This character was done for the Blender course. This character was done for the Advanced Character course. This one was used for the Marvelous Designer and for the Cinematic course. And Gavala was done for the 3D Printing course. All of these characters, whenever I was doing them, for all of them, I used the exact same charts, the male and the female charts. And before I go on to the little details, I just want to remind you guys that you can learn how to do any of these characters right here because we use ZBrush by checking our ZBrush Mega Bundle. Hey guys, I am super happy to announce that we have a great package for all of you. I know a lot of people want to learn about Seabrush, they want to begin their Seabrush career, and this is the best deal you can get. For the next 5 days, until March 11, we're gonna have this bundle available through ArtStation. 17 of our best selling courses at an amazing price. We have things like introduction to Seabrush, character likeness, hard surface sculpting, creature creation, 3D printing, and much more. Our best 17 courses are going to be available at an 80% discount for only $35. The price originally is $180, but we're going to lower all that all the way down to $35. $35 for 17 courses, and you guys are going to get the best possible teaching that you can for Seabrush. This bundle will only be available until March 11th, so for the next 5 days only, and it's only going to be available through ArtStation. So make sure to check the link down here and become a great 3D artist in no time. 
there we go. So I'm actually gonna take the promo off for just a second. There we go. So when we go over here and we check the head of the character, the head is usually measured measure from the headline to the chin, okay? Very common mistake is people will measure the head all the way up. You don't wanna do that. You wanna start on the hairline roughly. So as you can see, this is the main headline. Now, what are the main divisions that you, you need to know about the face? The first head is the head itself. The second head falls roughly or ends roughly at the nipple height, roughly, not always but it's usually the, the case. So nipples right there. The third head is gonna be the navel. The fourth head is gonna be the crotch right here, not the genitals, the crotch, okay? Genitals usually hang a little bit lower. Then uh, in the case of this character, I actually made him way, way, way longer. You can see that we have five heads on the legs because he's supposed to be an amphibian. And this is where you can break the rules. This is why when you know the rules, you can adapt those rules and change it. And even though you're gonna be breaking the rules, when you take a look at the character, it makes sense. It looks okay and it looks proportioned. So as you can see, I went for a really long leg. These are five heads of, uh, of legs pretty much. But usually in the in the traditional um, character, the, the third head is a little bit difficult to find. I usually like to go with the end of the, um, of the rectus, femoris, yeah, rectus femoris, which is one of the muscles here on the quadriceps. And then the, the, the sixth head is gonna be right here beneath the knee. Okay, the seventh head, again, a little bit difficult to find, but it's usually, as you can see, right when the calves end. So the main mass of the calves are gonna be right here. That's where this one is gonna end. And then the, the last head is on the ground, of course. Sometimes, and you're gonna see this when you take a look at proportions, we have what we call the realistic proportions, and then we have what we call the heroic proportions. I personally tend to always use the heroic proportions because it makes your character look a little bit more well, heroic, and that adds an extra half head. You can look at this up as well here in Google. If you look for male proportions, that's this one's right here. So we, as humans, we fall into the uh, realistic proportions. Where are they? Oh my God, I hate, I hate when they nest like an image. What the fun? There we go. So the normal proportions, which is what we normally have, seven and a half heads. Idealistic proportions, which is what we're looking at on the um, what's the word? On the, on the Photoshop file right now is eight heads. And then fashion, as you can see, eight and a half. I don't use this as much, or I don't call this fashion. They call this heroic, which is nine heads. I usually go for fashion and I call that like personally heroic. I think nine heads is a little bit way too much. Like you can see the, the face starts looking very, very small and he looks really, really, really tall. So usually like Kratos from God of War, uh, Master Chief from Halo, um, I don't know, um, like a Marcus Phoenix from, no, it was Marcus Phoenix from, from Gears of War, Kratos from God of War. All of these guys are usually like heroic proportions. So you're going to see that things are slightly bigger than usual, but they're going to give you, or that's going to give you a really nice uh, effect. Now, on this chart right here, I want to show you some secrets that you might not see like normally and are very, very important. Uh, some of this were taught by me uh, by some anatomy teachers. Some of them were taught by me by other sculpting teachers. So I've been gathering this information throughout my, my years of experience. First of all, if you go to the nipples and you create a line from the nipple to the base of the clavicles right there, and then from those nipples to the navel, you're going to form this shape right here which as you can see, it's pretty much like a kite, right? Like the kites that you fly on the park and stuff. Well, this is a great way to know if things are looking proportionate. Why? Because if you draw the shape, and I usually do this instead of zeros with the Damien standard, I just like scratch the shape on my characters when I'm working on them. If you draw the shape and the shape looks really like long, like this, then that means that your proportions are off and that's wrong. If it also looks very short, like this, it also means that it's wrong. It should look very proportionate, like what you're seeing here. This does not happen, however, with the females. Why not? Because the females, depending on the breast size, and again, there's so, so many differences in breast sizes, you will have a slightly different result. So what I like to do with females is I actually like to sculpt the breast as a separate subtool first so that I can give them the proper form. And while you have that as a separate subtool, you can hide them, do the quick like a kite trick, as you can see right here, which should be a little bit more elongated and that's gonna give you a proper proportion. So that's the first secret that this like charts have. The second secret is a D rhomboid shape that we have right here. If we go from the navel, to the crotch and to this thing, which is the superior, anterior, superior iliac spine. Our, our pelvis has like spines, like little spikes where muscles attach to them. And this is the anterior, which means forward, superior, on top, iliac spine. 
Um, this point right there is very important because you can actually see it, especially when people are really thin on the waist, you can see it poking uh, through this, well, not poking through the skin, but it's, it's pushing through the skin and you can see the elevation very clearly. If you draw a shape there, you should find this very nice like rhomboid shape, very square, very equilateral. It's not perfectly equilateral, but it's pretty, pretty balanced. And again, if you draw that shape and it's like really flat like this, your proportions are off and it's very long like this, your proportions are off and you need to check your proportions, okay? That's the first secret. On the females, it happens the exact same way. Again, we tend to go a little bit like a slightly, slightly like, uh, the, the female shape tends to be, or the way it tends to be represented, it's like slimmer, thinner, curvier. That's, that's what we normally go. And for the male figure, we usually go for strong, sturdy, like really like dense or condensed stuff. So if you had to like give a shape to the to the male figure, it would probably be oh, it's happening here. Photoshop. React. That's weird. Oh, I can see. What the hell? Oh my god, for some reason Photoshop crashed. Let's save this real quick. I'm going to save this on my desktop. Sorry about this. And let's open it up again. So again, if you had to describe the male figure, it's usually a square. And if you had to describe the female figure, it's usually a triangle. Okay, that's like, again, that's just a general generalization of how we perceive the shapes. It doesn't mean that it has to be like that. It's just been that way for a long time. And that's what audiences and clients and everyone is expecting to have. I'm not saying you cannot have any other proportion. This is just like the normal, like normal real. I, I wouldn't even say realistic. It's just the normal expected proportions, if you wish. So let's open Photoshop real quick. And while that is opening, we can go here to this guys right here. And um, I'm gonna show you another very cool trick. Uh, the arms, a very common mistake with arms is that people tend to either make them too long or too short. And one way to know whether your arms are properly, um, properly calibrated is by going to this trick. If you go to the arm and you go to the front view, you're gonna see that the arm pretty much matches the navel. Look at that. So the elbow right here, sorry, not the arm, the elbow pretty much aligns itself to the navel. And this is very important because this is where, again, you can break some of the rules. Usually when you have a character, you cannot elongate the arm, okay? You cannot elongate the arm more than the forearm, okay? You can make a character with really long forearms, like a troll. If you take a look at trolls, they usually have really long forearms, but the arms is still short. Because if you start like making the arm really long, it actually restricts the movement of the forearms. And it's the opposite if you do it the other way. The way I like to remember this is with Popeye. You guys remember Popeye? Did you see the cartoons? I didn't see the cartoons, but I saw the comics when I was little. It was printed on the newspaper. So Popeye, as you can see, the forearms and the lower legs of Popeye are really big. That's what you need to remember. If you want to break the rules and you want to have a character with really long arms, the forearm should never be shorter than the arm. It should at least be equal or if you want a longer, but it should not be shorter. It's going to look really, really weird. Like not even like a T-Rex. It's just going to look weird and very disproportionate. Same for the legs. You can make the lower legs really long, but they should not be shorter than the upper legs. Okay. And you don't want the upper legs to be longer than the lower legs in proportions. Uh, another couple of like really interesting like information that you can find on this chart right here, and this is probably going to be the, the last thing, are the silhouette of the character. So if you take a look at the back of the character, the glutes of the character are going to be pretty much aligned to the back muscles. Some people are really heavy on the butt. They have really big butts. But uh, usually, again, the, this, this sort of like ideal realistic proportion will give you this empty or negative space right here. And the same happens on the female character. We can't really see it right here, but you're going to see this. As you can see, again, the butt is lifted a little bit, and that's because of the heels. If you were to bring the heels down, it would be very, very similar. But again, usually due to the extra fat tissue that uh, women have, you're going to have slightly bigger, uh, slightly bigger butts than males. Now, on the front side of things, this is very important. We have this really interesting silhouette with the chest. This is the chest, and then the rib cage, and then the abdomen. See how it's not straight? Very common mistake that people make. They make this very, very straight. And that makes a really ugly, or not ugly, but really boring character. So for instance, if I take this guy right here and I go to the side view, 
you can see how even though he's quite flat chested, right? He's not like super big or super like uh, developed. You still have those little like falls on those specific pieces, which is again, the chest muscles, the rib cage, and then the abdomen muscles. I do the exact same thing with Tyros over here. You can see it right there. So chest muscle, rib cage, and then abdomen. So all of these things I'm saying, I use them on the creation of my characters. This is part of how I create all of my characters. Uh, Gavala is a slightly different case because she's already posed. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to appreciate all of the anatomy and stuff. But we use a very, very similar techniques. Actually, on the 3D printing course, we first go through the... Um, what's the word? We first go through the T-pose creation of the mesh, the proportions and everything, and then we go and, and pose her properly. Now, Gavala and uh, this guy right here, I wanted to include them on the chart because even though they are proportionate, they're actually not realistic. This one, of course, is very cartoony. We went for this sort of like Pixar looking or a DreamWorks looking style. And Gavala, I went for a little bit more like anime-ish, longer legs, longer arms thing. You can see that the arm, if she were to, to bring it down, the arm would be like really, really long. And you can see that the legs are really, really, really long as well. That's and That was a stylistic choice when we were creating both of these characters to generate something that looked a little bit more interesting. Uh, Thyros and this guy right here, the Agrog, they both follow more traditional human proportions. However, as you can see, this one, we gave him longer legs. And this guy is probably the most proportionate of all of them. So going back to the chart over here, another thing that we need to take into account is the gesture of the characters. This is super, super important. The gesture is how the forms and the volumes are pushing forward and backwards and giving us a different like balance for the figure. And gesture drawing, it was one of the classes that I had the most problem with. I think I got a C or something like that. I sucked at gesture drawing. It was the worst class for me because I didn't know how to draw. And it took me a lot of time. Actually, I, I think until the like the third gesture drawing class was when I got it. So hopefully with this, you guys are going to be able to get it a lot sooner. Gesture is how the body balances itself out. Objects, every object has a balance point, right? And it stands still as long as it's on its balance uh, position. We as humans, since we have a lot of things moving, like the arms and the legs and the torso and everything, we need to have a slightly different configuration so that we can find that balance at every single position. If I, imagine if we were completely stiff, like a rock or like a, like a stick, any movement that we would do out of our like center of gravity and we would fall. So thanks to the way we're like arranged as human bodies, we can get way more balance. So the gesture is very important. I'm gonna actually make this a little bit bigger on the pixel side of things. And I'm gonna push this. You can see the head is slightly tilted forward. The chest is slightly tilted backward. The hips are slightly tilted forward. And then the legs, as you can see, we're gonna have a, this line right here and then this line so this one tends to be quite straight. And then this one, as you can see, curves forward like this. So those like change, changes in, in direction, they, they balance stuff out. If you've seen like Gothic architecture, how arches and everything helps with the distribution of weight, that's what we're seeing here on the silhouette. So if you want to have a really cool character, you need to follow proper proportions, proper anatomy, and proper gesture. Now, with this, my friends, we're going to be closing this uh, topic. If you want me to delve deeper in any of the things that we mentioned, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do so. Remember that we have our ZBrush uh, like uh, mega bundle going. We have a lot of anatomy classes. We have a lot of like this, like I cover this sort of content with way more depth in all of my classes whenever I'm doing a character. I'm going to be covering this on the next core I'm recording. So if you want to check it out, the link is down here in the description. And again, thank you for your support. Hopefully this class I know was very theoric, like theoretical. There was a lot of information. It was not a lot of like doing 3D stuff, but it's super, super important. These are the fundamentals of any character creation that we're going to be doing. So any thoughts, any comments, please let me know. And uh, yeah, this weekend, remember, we have portfolio review. So if you want to leave your portfolio, this is probably the last time you're going to be able to do so before I close the submissions. Make sure to leave them down here in the description as well. And I'll be seeing you back this weekend when we take a look at all of your guys' work. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.